Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas. People, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host, Dennis Simpson, as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village, the award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007 or find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. And we're back. And Shane, the craziest thing you've ever heard come out of your mouth or the craziest thing you ever remember doing. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, there's actually two, one, the $20,000 I handed the bookie after one weekend of betting. And then the second was the trading of the currency where I lost $60,000 one morning, my wife woke up and I'm sitting there on the edge of bed crying. She said, what happened? I said, I just lost $60,000. She goes, Oh, I thought something happened to your mom rolled back over and went to sleep. And that's why we've asked Shane Lester <laughs> to be on. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we best story. to be on as our financial consultant today <laughs> here we go that's great he sounds eminently qualified <laughs> he does he does <laughs> shane how many mistakes do you think you've made oh, with money? A lot. they all got zeros on them i mean we can go <laughs> everything with money we've done everything with money we tell our classes when we host the course so uh, we've done everything with money except by illegal drugs and then obviously uh, well, not obviously, but my wife threw in one day and prostitutes and, and prostitutes. You got to always throw up. that in. You yeah, throw she that threw in. that up. And yeah. She threw that out there. And so, I mean, the 401k <laughs> loans, the, hey, let's go buy a new car because we're bored. You know, let's come out of coach with 10 purses because we can, you know, but we really couldn't. Right. So right, right. Uh, we can go on and on. Man, Shane. OK, let's get the, the basics down. Shane, you're with Wonder State Mortgage. Is that correct? Right. Tell right. us exactly what you do. Okay, I'm a mortgage broker. So that means that I do a lot of shopping for you out there. Um, Wonder State, Arkansas used to be called the Wonder State. And um, it mm -hmm. obviously sounds a lot better than Lester Mortgage. So when I <laughs> opened it in 2003, when I left Bank of the Ozarks uh, to come open this place, I just wanted more options to offer my clients because if you didn't fit in one box, we really couldn't help you a whole lot. So everybody from every walk of the tracks, no matter what side they're on, needs to have somebody that represents them, whether it's $50,000 or $5.5 million loan. They all need somebody that's going to work for them and take care of them as if they're the most important client there. So that's what but, we do as a mortgage broker. But you're not a bank. Why, not why a would bank. I come to a mortgage banker instead of a bank? You really want to know that bank. answer? Yeah. Okay. I'm not anti-bank. I have my money to bank like everybody else. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? I don't go to a, I don't go to a bank to get insurance. I go to an insurance broker. I don't go to a bank to get financial advice. I go to a financial advisor. I don't go to the bank to get a mortgage. I go to a mortgage broker. Are there good people in those fields and banks? Of course there is. But do you know to be a mortgage broker, we have to go through 20 hours pre-licensing education. We have to pass a federal test. We have to take eight hours a year. We have to be fingerprinted, background checked just to be a mortgage broker or a loan officer. Do you know who I can go be a mortgage loan officer for tomorrow without doing any of that? Yeah. A bank, a bank, because the bank is basically going to broker my mortgage anyway. Right. They I mean, are. Very few they banks are. actually hold my note. Right. And even if they do hold the note, who knows what happens? Uh, somebody buys them out. Right. Surely banks don't, you know, consolidate, do they? No, you know, never. You know, Bank no. of the Ozarks in 2000, what, 19 walked in December 15th or 16th, said we're not doing mortgage loans anymore and shut their whole mortgage department down. So let's just say they were keeping, they were keeping mortgage. Let's just say they were keeping mortgages. And then whoever bought that mortgage part of it, who knows what they're going to do. And the only thing that changes when your loan sells is who you mail your payments to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, nobody, there's not anybody out there that just loves the servicing side, right? The people who collect your payments, nobody's happy with Wells Fargo or bank of the bank of America. Nobody's happy with those people. I mean, again, they're servicers, customer service. 
So, hey, my escrow account's messed up. Hey, I can't get a hold of anybody. At least if it's somebody we put you with, we can get on the phone with our account rep. They can give us a direct in and they can get a hold of somebody and say, okay, here's what's going on. Let's get this fixed. Do you have resources, of, I'm assuming, that, that the bank can't access or won't access? Um, let's say the bank have, probably has resources that we can't access, mm-hmm. right? We have a niche product, anything that's purchase, refinance, cash out, stuff like that. We don't have short-term loans, right? We're not doing car loans. We're not doing home equity line of credits, right? We're not doing second mortgages. We are just your primary residence, your secondary residence, or any non-owner occupied or what we call investment properties out here where you're not living in the property. So we have multiple lenders to shop from. Okay, well, well, let's cut to the chase here. And two things for our audience that's listening and watching. Uh, we want to cover the details of buying a home in the village, uh, what all that includes, and the chain, uh, and whereas you're not located in the village. I mean, you lease a lot, and you play out here and play golf pretty regular, wouldn't you say? I do, and I do a lot of business in the village. I mean, again, I probably think it's maybe 8 to 10% of my business, even here in Little Rock, just from the connections we've made up there. Because, yeah. again, we take care of our clients, and we do what we're supposed to do. I don't well, have anybody to hide behind, right? Yeah, right? yeah. I no. mean, I don't have a big name. So, <laughs> you know, those Google reviews out there, if you get a chance, look us up. You'll see some very compelling stories. Remember, people will dog you in a heartbeat, but for somebody to take the time to go say something nice about you out there, they really have to go out there and say something nice. So It's a lot more rare. We're a proud of that. I'm waiting on somebody just to throw a four-star up there just to throw me off one day. <laughs> right now, they're all five stars. We're going to keep working hard for that. Congrats. Well, let's talk about buying a property here in the village. And Randy and I have done a lot of shows about this. We actually just got through working with a a, a title company and working on some stuff and trying to explain to people the process or the best way to do the process. But we see more and more, and actually Rick Marshall, one of our realtors that was on, who works a lot of times on, on lakefront properties, was telling us how the number of cash buyers was just flooding the market. Now, some of them are investors, but some of them just are flush with cash, which... Is that necessarily a good idea, Shane? Well, everybody's going to be a little bit different, right? I've got a guy out of California that's bought 10 properties in 2021. He maxed out what he could finance with Fannie Mae, 10 individual properties. So he didn't even he didn't even come here to buy the properties. We met him after he'd already bought the 10 properties. We had lunch, and now his father-in-law is in the process of buying 10 properties. So they're coming out of California, Washington State, coming out on the West Coast where they're buying these houses over in Arkansas because the price points are so good for them, right? And so those coming here paying cash, we don't see a lot of those because obviously they skip right by us. Every once in a while, we'll have a situation where the client will say, hey, should I pay cash? Well, if you pay cash, do you have your investment still? Do you have your emergency fund still? Or is that going to take every dime you have out of your pocket, right? Because I'm going to tell you, I don't borrow money anymore, right? I love my Dave Ramsey. I love teaching it. I love sharing it. There's no judgment here, people in debt or whatever, but we do share a book with them. We give them the book. We give them the information. And sometimes they'll say, hey, Shane, what would you do? And if you're a 24-year-old just out of college with $120,000 in debt, you're probably not supposed to be buying a house right now. You need to be knocking out those student loans, right? That's only when they ask. And the good part about what we're able to do, we're able to give them exactly what they need to hear, not what they want to hear sometimes. And as a young lady sitting here and cried, and she said, this is the only house going to make me happy. And I go, can I ask you a question? She said, what? I said, what do you have to buy next to make you happy? Oh, and she wow. started crying. And I gave her a nap. She said, you just do, you keep those because you make everybody cry. I go, no, sweetie. I said, I just want you to understand, right? What you just said. And, you know, we want to help people own a house. Anybody can buy a house, mm-hmm. right? We want to make sure that they understand the options and where they're at. And are you buying too much? Most people don't listen. They're going to buy what they want to buy. They don't care about what's going on with their, how much credit they utilize. But at least we give them a dose of reality and try to help them along the path. And then if they ever get stuck, we start right where they are. Hey, Shane, how did I get out of debt? Hey, Shane, I'm thinking about selling my house. Hey, Shane, should I buy this rent house? Right? And all I can do is share with them and go through the options as an option finder, right? We find them options to say, hey, here's here's the way I see this, 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 and this. You're an adult now. You choose which one's works for, best for you. You choose which one you and your spouse are comfortable with doing. Does that make sense? 
it does completely because right? everybody's let me, let me, different it, it is and uh you know the, the you you really touched on some great points there and by the way i need to clarify dave ramsey is a guy out of nashville who basically uses biblical principles to try and explain to you it doesn't have to be biblically based it's just common sense you don't need to live your life indebted to other people uh, you, it, it's it debt equals chains being out of debt equals freedom and you get to do things that you can't fathom. But I say all that to say, let's come back. Let's say that somebody's coming in, they're buying one. The, the, I have a friend, I'll, I'll bring their example in. They have a, uh, they have two homes they're, they're Her parents have a home in, in California and he, they have a home in California. These are very modest homes. Okay. They're, they're nothing fancy, but together they're going to put together more than a, a million, 1.1, 1. 1, something like that, because these are just normal, ordinary houses there. Then they're coming to this market and saying, Hey, we can buy anything we want and pay cash and we're great. And I'm like, well, yeah, you can, but why would you do that? Because you're going to invest a million dollars in an asset you're going to sit on and frankly, not get any real benefit out of them. Now, don't get me wrong. I want you to own your house. I want you to sure. be debt free ish, but you could take, you could take money out of that. And for what it's worth, the words I'm about to mention at regular banks, the, it looks like you're talking about trafficking drug money. When you use this word, when you say, what about a reverse mortgage? I have good friends at those banks that go, yeah, Dennis, no, we don't No, We don't need to do that. And we, we, you know, they don't even want to talk about it. All right. So why, why would I not buy a house in cash, take 500,000 out and go invest it maybe in another property or in the stock market or whatever I felt was a great investment or in a business? Why? What's the deal, Shane? Okay. All right. We'll come back to reverse in just a second, but just paying cash, your example of the two people in California have $1.1 million in two houses. That is one segment of their entire financial portfolio. That's one segment. That's one piece of the pie, right? What do we have put back? What do we have? Are we behind on our investing schedule? Are we going to have enough, you know, mailbox money coming in at the time? There's just, that's one piece of it. So just to say everybody needs to pay cash or not pay cash, we need somebody that's looking at the full picture and seeing that they've got everything taken care of. And usually their financial advisor or financial consultant is going to be great at that and make sure that they're not losing any opportunity costs for certain things, right? I mean, should they use the money like this? Should they go do that? But what if they're paying cash and they're maxed out on their credit cards and they're maxed out on two new cars and they still have student loans for 45 years, right? So there's so many more pieces to it to see what works for you and what works for them. And again, I think there's more to the conversation. And one of the things I, I, I told you, I love Dave and I don't, I don't borrow money anymore, right? But I lend money every single day. And they go, well, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? I said, because I get to see their whole world. I get to see what they're doing with it. And, you know, I talked to a 26 year old yesterday and I said, do you know, you and your wife are going to go through a million dollars in the next 10 years. He goes, what? That's impossible. I said, well, how much do you make? How much does your wife make? Now let's multiply that times 10. That's with modest raises. Or you see the family in here that's got two working professionals they're going to go through two and a half million dollars in the next 10 years. I said, you can either do that and come back, you know, and say, what happened to that two and a half million dollars we just went through, right? Or you can get a better plan for it and do what you need to do with it and go forward. So those are the things that we're going to do with the clients, right? Are they going to listen? It's not my job to make them listen. It's my job to feed them the information. It'll get watered. God will talk to them, right? That, that's what will happen. Now, let's talk about that reverse for a second, right? We've got them moving in from California, wherever, and they don't have a lot of money left. And the number one reason why we see that is we see that because kids, adult children, are draining their parents. I had a client. No, yes, no. Yes, I had a client there in the village where her son was making $145,000 a year, 47 years old. She's making twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand a year. She couldn't afford the uh, the home equity line of credit she had right now, so she was doing a reverse to pay it off and to take some more money out. Guess what she's going to do with that other money? You're going to tell you give it to him. They're going to give it to him, and I told her, I said, "Ma'am, if that's what you're going to do, I really don't want to do this mortgage." She never called me back, but hey, 
that somebody needed to give her a reality because he's living off of what four or five times what she has and he can't make it and so she's going to continue just to milk it i see that so many times and um so the reverse i mean how deep do you want to get into the reverse who is it for how does it benefit well, well, let's go back to it. What is a reverse? Let's explain it from your curious George 101. Okay. What do I do why, and how do I do it? Why do you want to have a paid for house when you retire? So I can lower my cost of, I lower my, my monthly expenditures, uh, I, m- less mailbox money coming in, less mailbox money going out. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can sustain myself on this, the nut I need to cut. This is how much I need. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So most people are retiring early. Most people are retiring with what? Retiring with debt, retiring with a mortgage, right? And then all of a sudden the income's not as strong coming in and it doesn't have near as much buying power, especially with what we see going on right now. In the or economy. there's a medical, or there's a medical instance. Or there's a medical, absolutely. And so now they're stuck with this payment. A reverse mortgage, what it does, okay? A forward mortgage means that you pay the interest each month whenever you make your payment, whatever interest had accrued for the previous month. A reverse mortgage allows you to use the equity in your home to either take money out or to extinguish a first mortgage, right? So usually you get about 50% of what the house is worth. And out of that 50%, you have to pay off any mandatory obligations such as a mortgage already, all right? And so what happens is you have no mortgage payment. All you got to do is pay taxes and insurance while you live in the property and keep normal upkeep. Right, you just have to keep the house in normal working order. Can they send somebody to your house to look at it? Of course they can, but they're never, I've never heard of that. I've been doing them since 2007. All right, but the number one person that we get to help is the widow or the widower who now only has one income. They've liquidated all their savings that they were left with. They do not want to move. And we can go in there with a the reverse mortgage and extinguish that first mortgage so they can have that five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars more a month in their situation. Right? Everybody's different on that. Here's the good part about it. When they pass away, what happens to the house, gentlemen? It gets sold or you know, whatever. What do you mean whatever? Well, I mean we they, they sell and then they extinguish the reserve 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 mortgage, right? What would happen if you had a regular mortgage and, and you passed? What would your heirs do? They would have to be responsible for that, the, the, the balance of that debt. Yes. Guess what? The only people's name on the title on a reverse mortgage are the people that own it. So if it's your mom and dad, it's just a mortgage. So when they pass, there's a balance on the house. The kids have two options, three options. Sell the house, pay off what's owed, and the heirs keep the equity. Sign it over to the bank. Please don't do that. If you got equity in the property, that's kind of silly. Or go refinance that into a regular mortgage and take over the payments. It's just a mortgage with a balance when you get done. Now, is there, when you do a reverse mortgage, Mm -hmm. is there a, is it like a refi where cash comes out or does it just simply make a a monthly payment to make your your payment note? You have three options on that, right? You can have you can have monthly income coming in or monthly money coming in. It's not income. Okay. You have monthly money coming in. You can take a lump sum or you can leave it in a line of credit or any combination of those. Hey, I want $200 a month as long as the equity is available, right? For what you qualify for. What you qualify for is based on your age, your interest rate, right? That tells you how much you qualify for and, and the value of the property. So what, why does the bank treat me like I'm a, I'm a drug criminal when I bring up the topic? Is it just anathema to them or are they just what? It's ignorance on it, right? It's just ignorance. So it's not, it's not, they're not trying to be mean about it, but think about a protected class of people out there with a product. The number one complaint out there on mortgages is on reverse mortgages and it's by the heirs. If you look at the C- CFPB's website on this. <laughs> right? The heirs. Well, where were you when mom and daddy didn't have no money to live off of or grandma? Where were you then? But now that they lived off their own money, we've had, I've seen um, parent or parents take money out and do the kids, co- grandkids college fund because they're afraid their kids would blow the money. I've seen a lady take it out and take her two sisters on a six month cruise 
where they could go create a memory because when she passed, they were just going to sell the house and split the money up anyhow. So she created a memory with them. She's, yes. With them. We've seen people do it to get rid of their mortgages. We've seen people do it to plan, right? Just to plan. So here's the deal. If you got a, you know, 60, 80, $200,000 line of credit over there and the market takes a 30% drop and you're pulling your money out each month, you kind of lock in that loss right there when you take it. Wouldn't it be nice to have an alternative way to kind of supplement your income until the market got back and you didn't have to take it out and realize that loss? There's so many different ways to use the product. The number one thing we got to do is we got to make sure people understand. Don't just say no, right? Don't just say no. My little tagline with Reverse Mortgage of Arkansas is where you get the facts first. Make sure it works for you. My and she's not in financial distress. They're not in financial hurting at all. They just would rather use their money for something else. Instead and that's of, their privilege. They get to do that. Instead of tying it up in their house. If a paid for house is a forced savings account and you don't have the money setting aside, why would you leave the equity in there and not utilize it to enjoy your time with you and your spouse or just your mother or just your father? Why would you just leave it there so your kids can sell it and blow it when you pass? So you Remember mentioned the, that it's okay. not income. So it, if one of the if one of the if one of the methodologies of a reverse mortgage is okay, I, I want to get one because I, I need more cash flow. Mm -hmm. Is that viewed as regular taxable income? How is that viewed? I'm not a CPA nor a tax advisor nor to play one on TV, but borrowed money is not taxable. Borrowed You're borrowing the money, right? You go sense. get a home equity line of credit and take thirty thousand dollars out of your house. That wasn't taxable, was it? Nope. Yep. Nope. How amazing. Now, I don't know if you remember the uh, motivational speaker, Les Brown. I think he passed away yes. not too long ago. Fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. Loved him. And he had a great quote. He said, uh, talk about leaving errors and, and inheritance to his kids. He said, if I thought I was going to die and I had a nickel, I'd swallow it. So, <laughs> so he wouldn't so, have to give it to his kids. Exactly. And I, I'll tell you what, let me stand on my soapbox just for a minute to see families literally sacrifice everything they can. And wh what is your financial goal? We're trying to get our kids through college. I got news for you. Your kids can go to city college, Thank go to UALR, live at home, not break the bank, not run up $120,000 in, in debt. And they will get an education that will get them the great job they're looking for just as easily as going to a, a Ivy league or wherever. Um, Malcolm Gladwell, Malcolm Gladwell, who wrote the book Blink and so many other books, he talked about how he got a Canadian uh, a, a state college uh, education in Canada. His kids are going to a, a, a uh, Ivy College because he's made all these millions in books, and he doesn't think they're getting necessarily a better education. But us, and, and we, we leave it to an 18 year old to decide where they want to go to college so that we're going to spend endless money on whatever whim they find. Well, you know, they have really pretty grounds at LSU or wherever, nothing Randy, I'm just saying, but you yeah, know, forget all of that and just follow Mike Rowe and go become a welder and you'll make six figures right out of the bat. <laughs> you don't even have to bother with college, but it you could be the, hot where I'm welding. It could be hot. Yeah. Yeah. They, David tell you all the time. He says, look, he said, that's just crappy parenting. He said to let your 18 year old go out there and drown themselves. Right. And what are we approaching? Two trillion dollars in student loan debt right now after the government takeover and they're wanting to write it all. I mean, come on. Well, increasingly, even the Googles of the world aren't even requiring a college degree. Right. So yeah, Amazon, a lot of others. I mean, work. unless you're going to go into law, which I don't get that, but to each his own or a physician, you know, I mean, something that requires it as a gateway to pursue your dream i honestly i'm just speaking for myself i don't get it i don't get it but that's me and i've well, got I mean, i've got a master's educated son mm -hmm. who's got his own home inspection business has gone over to the blue collar side and is making way more money and is way happier than he was as a as an administrator in public education so there's that right. and again it, to just each to see them again it's a number one inhibitor right now just recently, the government changed the minimum calculation on student loan calculations, even if they are in deferment or forbearance. We would used to have to we would use one percent of the balance, right? So if you had a twenty thousand dollars student loan, that's a two hundred dollar minimum payment we'd use. Now they've dropped that down to a half a percent. 
So now instead of a $200 payment, it's a hundred dollar payment, right? Because it's the number one inhibitor stopping people from buying houses right now are the student loan debt. Okay. So, so let's be frank about this now. And by the way, Shane, thank you so much. I'm going to take a moment here and plug Shane Lester, Wonder State Mortgage. And thank you for your advice. Thank you for spending a little time with us here. I want to come back to this and say, as you say, that comes down to crappy parenting, but as a part of it is, you know, it's funny. I remember I, I, I was at, at, uh, in high school, I was actually in shop class three times a day. And one of the, re- I had two, I had a class where I was, had my own class, two other classes. I was a helper. And I remember we had planers and we had routers and we had all kinds of woodworking equipment. I thought was high tech, super cool. We had welders, we had great equipment. I graduate college. I come out and work in printing after a few years of printing in the nineties, late nineties, we see that schools now have to have high, uh, early, early 1990s schools now have to have technology centers. We now have to have computers. I'm the guy who does that. I'm installing in computers and selling computers. That's fine. And I literally watch them carry the routers and the planers and the welders out of the building and put the computers back in. And I remember thinking, not the smartest guy in the world at that time, but I remember thinking, we're going to have to have welders. We're going to need planers. We're going to need guys who can work with wood and other materials. Not everything is going to be a digital future. Paid somebody to put in a uh, ceiling fan lately? Yeah. Or a couple of new light switches? Mm -hmm. What do you mean $140? You were here 13 minutes. (laughs) Right? I mean, okay, whatever. I don't have to mess with it, you know, but again, it's, in, it's insane, but you're right. I mean, they're making, and you can't, if you know, you can't get them, you can't get them to your house, the plumbers, the electrician, right? I mean, they're so busy and, you know, speaking of busy, we're hearing that it's going to take eight to 10 years for supply of housing to catch up with demand eight to regardless to of interest rates. Eight to really? 10 years. But the interest rates are going up, and so you've clearly seen a, a you've seen us you've seen a downward surge, or if that's the right word for it, right? We have on the refinance side, right? But I mean, from last year to I'm this being year, snar- yeah, I'm being year snarky. Years. I mean, you're still there's the line still forms to the right. People that still want mortgages, right? Right, and and like I like I shared in '08, right? We we were blessed. We prospered right through '08. You know, as the pie shrinks. So do the people eating the pie, but those people that are still eating the pie get a bigger slice of the pie now because you've weathered the storm. You're not snowed under because you're too much in debt. You you haven't overextended, got too much help. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You've built lifelong relationships. You know, you look at my phone now, there's almost 11,000 names in my phone. You call me up. Hey, Dennis, how you doing? Shane, how do you know it's me? Well, I don't lose your number, brother, unless you change it right? Yeah, hokey, whatever, that's fine, but it's still nice when people know, recognize who's calling, or, you know, last night during the storm, everybody in Austin, Arkansas, I'm texting them, making sure they're okay. Half of them said, what? Who is this? (laughs) And I said, Shane Lester would want to say, oh, man, thanks for checking on us, right? But again, those things matter to us, and, you know, maybe it was Zig that says, you help enough people get what they want, you'll have more than you ever need. Yep. They'll help you get what you want. And, right. and as Randy and I've talked about, I mean, let's face it, you know, this podcast is finally making money. We are commercial. Right. We're, we have commercials installed now. And the bottom line is, is that we have no interest in a transaction, right? We're looking for relationships. Relationships will make you for the rest of your life. Um, anyway, I, I, I digress. I was Can actually I tell working... you something on that. Sure, we please. had a national convention uh, before COVID hit. They told us that over 60% of people surveyed doing a mortgage preferred the transaction over the relational because they wanted to make sure you can get it done for them first before you start trying to be my friend. And I thought, what an interesting take on that. Wow. That was, I'd never seen that. Like Cause again, all, we all want relational, right? We all want that relational, but they want to know that you can actually get it done. All right. You can be my friend all day. You can be nice all day long, but if you ain't getting my, if you ain't closing me on time, you're not taking care of me on rate and fees, right? Well, but I think that's probably typical, don't you, of 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 the services that are kind of one offs. Mm-hmm. Like if I, I mean, if I'm going to get a mortgage with you, okay, well, I'm going to do it, but 
one every. I six mean, months. but we're not we're not necessarily going to get together every six months or every year. I don't have to come back and revisit it. So, for me as a end user, it just seems like it's a transaction. Sure. So, but but that's different than what we try to build and we think about. Yeah. You know, I mean, th this morning, this afternoon, I texted everybody. It's got, I've had a birthday on today, right? April 12th birthdays. Yeah. Shot it directly right. from my phone. You know, it's probably 40 people. Just send them a happy birthday message. Right. But again, right. all I want to do is stay in front of them. I want yeah. them to know I'm still here. Yeah. Right. I want them to know, hey, we still know who you are. I'm not going to send you a newsletter saying, hey, you need to refinance. Right. Me. If you, if you want to refinance. Yeah, but you you're living finance. you're living by the same philosophy that Dennis and I do because we're both fans of Jeffrey Gittimer. You know, this okay. fame, fame, fame sales trainer who, who says people can say one of three things about you, something good, something bad, or nothing. Or nothing. And it's up to you what they say. So we all care about what people say about us, whether we've sold them or not. They're still going to talk. They're still mm -hmm. going to talk about us. We want them to say something good because that's the way we kind of all roll. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah given, respect. given our preferences, that's how we would like. Randy brought up something in one of our other shows that I want to chase down a little bit more for, for the outside, for people that are listening in. I think this okay. is great advice, but let's get under the hood even more. So Randy made note, we were in our show with Rick Marshall. Rick was saying that typically they would list a property on a Friday. We're talking about lake houses in particular, list a property on a Friday take offers all weekend long. Monday, they would encourage the buyer or the seller to evaluate one of those and see which one's the best. And we made a very specific point of saying, well, it's the one with the most money, right? No, not always. Somebody, sometimes it's close, who could close first. Sometimes it's who could extend and let you live there for three months or, you know, there's a million variables to that. But Randy brought up a fabulous point that I, I don't want to get lost. And that is there's 10, 12, 15 offers there's one home and there will be one buyer and one seller and there will be nine to 13 losers. Okay. And, and Shane, how do you help those people, pardon the term, not be losers financially? Do you, do you help them with their, their fiscal health? What can you do? You know, that's funny. All we can do is um, on our reputation, know that we'll get the deal done on time. They know when to sell it. I can't control what the client's going to offer. I can't control if they need to offer 4,000 more or they need to let them live there for, you know, 15 days. All we can do is go off the reputation we've built of getting it done on time, being efficient, keeping the communication lines open with the buyers and the sellers on the process so they know where they stand. You don't call my office and go, hey, I need to talk to Shane. And they go, well, Shane's not taking care of your mortgage anymore. I am. No, 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 no. I'm going to start, start with A and walk you through it. My team takes care of everything behind the scenes, but I'm your only point of contact. So the way we do that is again, I can't control what they're gonna offer. The realtor's gonna help with that. If the seller wants to do um, a, a cash deal and close in seven days, right? If my client ain't got the cash, what does it matter? Well, can you help make the losing buyer more attractive? Can you help and say, look, you know, if you didn't have this, this $80,000 uh, uh, Escalade hanging over your head, your credit score would be well over 800 and you would look better to the seller. Well, the seller's not going to ever see anything about the credit score, right? We send a pre-approval letter out said, Hey, you've been pre-approved based on the credit and income we verified. And that's as good as you're going to get at that point, right? We're going to close on time. Now then you'll see realtors have a fit out there. When you see some no name off the internet, I'm pre-approved with ABC mortgage out of New Jersey, nothing against New Jersey, but you're buying a house in Hot Springs village. Right? Who's in New Jersey? How are we going to get a hold of them? What are we going to do? Are we going to close on time? Right? Realtor's been trying to get a hold of them for a week. Well, how do we help? Well, the listing agent called and said, Hey, Shane, is it still solid? Of course it's solid. You got my pre approval letter. Right? Yes. If it's not solid and they're going to bring me junk in, they bring me tax returns in, now they're making $100 a month instead of $10,000 a month. You're going to know that immediately. Right? I mean, I can't control that, hey, they just ball face didn't know how they get paid, but that's one of the things that we can do is we make sure that the pre-approval we're efficient, we're fast, but on the offering side of that, it depends on what the seller's looking for because a client that's approved is a client that's approved. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a big an answer on that, how I can make them more attractive yeah. other than the seller. I've heard that, Hey, listen, they took your offer because they know who you are, Shane. 
Right. Well, let me let me tell you where I'm going with this. Uh-huh. And I, okay. I, I, you have you have a tremendous story about personal finance, mm-hmm. and and it's it from what I understand, it's a story of hard knocks. Sure, that's how it sounds like. Why don't and and where I'm hearing in my mind, and I'm you're you're making sense on everything we talk about, but I'm trying to make it more linear for our our listeners. If you're if you're disappointed that you didn't get your the, your offer wasn't accepted, and you've got one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of school loans maybe that was a blessing. Uh, what I guess I'm trying to go is, and Randy, is this okay? Can we go back down the personal finance avenue? Does that make some sense to kind of try and help the listeners? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm with him, you know, as far as what he does with a mortgage. Sure. You lost the deal, you lost the deal. It's right. it's not going to be because you didn't get, you didn't have approval. You couldn't get the loan. You couldn't get the mortgage. Whether you have a 620 or an 820. Yeah. And so to his point, you know, you're approved, you're not approved for whatever the amount is. There's so many other variables at play. I think what Dennis was curious is, so if there's, if there's 10 losers, you know, what, what could be done to enhance their position? And I don't know that a mortgage broker could do anything to enhance their position. I mean, if, unless they were approved. Okay. What's your thought? Okay. So. That is, that is a difference. I mean, my passion is to teach people about money because, again, I get to use my idiotic mistakes. Oh, I had a bankruptcy three years ago. I feel so – you know what? I've been there. I've been there. And here's how I got through the other side of it, right? So we don't – oh, you got a 440 credit score. Have a good day. See you later. No, we don't do that. We actually sit down with them and we'll – I get them in here. I want you to come in here and sit down. Let's look at this. We get them ready for later on where they can buy it. We don't just tell them go have a great day because everybody's going to tell them have a great day. But hey, do you need some resources? Right? You got a single mother out there getting hammered by collection agencies. You show her how to sit down and say, number one, they can't be disrespectful to you. Number two, you cannot give them a dime of your money until they put it in writing. This will settle the debt. Number three, they never get access to your bank account. Never. And we're not setting up bank. We're not setting up uh, installment plans. And fourth, you'll keep a copy of that letter and a copy of that cashier's check for the rest of your life because they'll sell it to somebody else. Now then, the part that stinks, one out of 25 will actually come in and sit down and learn. Really? But they'll call back six months later. Hey, I think I paid off a couple of my stuff. And what they do is they'll go to these credit mm-hmm. consolidation places. I'm not going to name anybody by name. <sighs> Okay, and they take their money and they just take their money and they take their money and they've made all their payments on time for, you know, three years. And they come in here with a 520 credit score and they're just so upset. And, you know, while we're talking about credit scores, listen, the mortgage industry after 2008 said we're going to use this scoring model with Experian, this scoring model with Equifax, this scoring model with TransUnion. So. Credit karma, credit scores are about as useless as the G in lasagna. Okay. Really? It's an advertising thing, right? It's a real life advertising thing. They even use a thing called like Vantage scoring model, right? So you can look on your credit karma right now and I pull your mortgage credit report up and they're not even going to be close. Okay. You go to 16 other mortgage companies today, they're going to pull your credit up. Everyone is going to have the same score because we're using the same scoring model. It could be different tomorrow. The reason why it could be different tomorrow is maybe one of those creditors updated tonight, updated a balance, right? put a late payment on there, right? So if you're not working with somebody with the heart of a teacher that shows you, hey, here are your options, right? There's four loans, VA. FHA, USDA, conventional, right? You're not a veteran. You have a 740 credit score. We're not doing FHA. You make too much money. We can't do USDA. So we're going plain Jane conventional, straightforward, right? And we have that conversation with every client out there. Do they like what we have to say all the time? No, right? But how do we help the bar? We had a lady just while ago, call while ago, 180,000, 608 credit score. 608 credit score, that's not very high, but she got approved, put 3.5% down on a $180,000 house with a 4.625 interest rate, 30-year fixed. 
there's still nothing wrong with that. No. Right? Now, we liked it better when it was two and a half. Yeah, sure. <laughs> of sure. course. It's all relative. Right? But, but let but me I ask. Don't know. So do you take, you encourage people to, based on their criteria, do you encourage them to take a 30 and pay it like a 15? I mean. Here's what we do. We show the 30 and we show the 15, mm -hmm. right? We show them both options, but here's the deal. And again, I love Dave's philosophy on that. If you get a 15 year mortgage and it's less than 25% of your take home pay, you're not buying too much house, right? But a lot of people go, I will pay extra. I'll just pay extra. You know, they don't pay extra. Right, they don't pay extra, and again, the thirty-year mortgage is what, exactly what it's there for, right? Thirty years, so you can quote unquote buy more house, right? But but, but I'm but let's not be frank. talk them out of it, but I do show them the options. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you show them? Do you show them the payoff schedule totally. that for the first ten years they're it's not going to make more than fifty dollars a month in principal? It's all there, and again, if they want to do that, again, if they want to pay the extra hundred, two hundred dollars a month, right? As they mail in their payment each month, they can actually knock that down and reduce a lot of the interest and build equity in the house. But again, the majority of them don't have that kind of discipline. They don't, and they don't, they don't want to have that kind of discipline to be honest right. with you. They're just, they, they've come to the fact of, I'm going to have a mortgage payment forever. I'm going to have a car payment forever. And you know, when you sit out there and I show them that beautiful 2022 Tundra out there, go, no, it doesn't have to have a car payment. It doesn't. Right. Right. 1.9 sounds great to me. I'm a numbers guy, but I can't teach people to save money and do that. Yeah. Right. We live it. They walk up to my wife at church and say, do you still carry the envelopes? And she'll pull them right out of our purse and say, yes. <laughs> right. Maybe old ex fashioned, but old hang fashioned on. Ex works. explain the envelopes, explain the envelopes. Envelopes is where you take money each month. And let's just say we have $300 for our groceries. We put $300 in that envelope at the beginning of each month. And when we run out of that $300, we're going to eat the food that we bought. We're done. We're done for that month, right? Now, when you're debt free, you have some flexibility on that, but we still have the parameters put in place and we still create a spending plan, a budget every single month because it worked, right? It worked. And like I said, nobody ever asked me, what would you do if you didn't owe anybody any money? <laughs> now, I know it's such a simple question. Come, come back to that asked. again. I, th I think we may have discussed that before we hit record. You had mentioned that, that, how that, that simple phrase changed your life. What was the question again? The question was, what would you do if you didn't owe anybody any money? And it never crossed my mind. What did you answer? Do what? What was your I answer? Can't. It was kind of the same reaction when I handed the bookie $20,000 when my wife looked over at me as we're exiting 123 right there in Bryan in front of Ashley's furniture. Yep. She goes, you know, you're one of the smartest guys I've ever met. And this is our eighth season together. She said, I got a question for you. How many times have you won? I go, you know, I've won. She goes, no, 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 no. I'm talking about for the year. She goes, hmm. Haven't placed a bet since that day. Hadn't placed a bet since that day. What year was that? 2008, end of 2008, November 2008. So why are you in the business? Why are you in the business that you're in? In the mortgage business? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It actually, um, it was either mortgage or financial advisors in Texas, right? Uh, my wife is from Carrollton. I met her when she was in Wichita Falls, Texas, when she was finishing up her uh, master's program. And after I met with the uh, the manager at the mortgage place there, I was like, man, this is awesome. The numbers, the helping people, the finding the way, the problem solving, the different personalities every single day. And then, you know, I come from the other side of the tracks, Pike Avenue, North Little Rock, Arkansas, right? I've seen what poor people get treated like. I've seen how you're responded to in certain situations, and nobody should have to do that. I work in West Little Rock, but I'm from North Little Rock, right? Dogtown. Dogtown, baby. So that's where I grew up. And so everybody deserves an advocate on their side. Everybody deserves, I'm not just saying this, read the read the dadgum uh, five stars, right? Our, our actions back that up. And um, we, again, you got $20,000 worth of books here we give away. You're sitting here having a problem with your wife. I got to go give her a marriage book for you. Or maybe you're, you're in a blended family. There's a blended family book over. Maybe you're in sales, right? And you need to read The Noticer by Andy Andrews, right? I mean, who knows what it may be over there? Maxwell Leadership Books. So if I read them, I like them. 
we buy a bunch of them and we give them away. And I believe that if I have them on hand, God will put the right people in front of me to give them to and plant those seeds along with the Dave Ramsey Total Money Makeover book. You know, so, if so, you come so, in here and you don't get, if you're not qualified, you get to leave with the <clears> Dave Ramsey book. And if you want one for your whole family, I'll give you nine of them. Sounds like this is more than a job. It is a lot more than a job. It's a calling in a ministry. And when buddies call and say, hey, you want to do this? I go, does it teach people about money? Nope. Have anything to do with mortgages? Nope. Are you my burning bush moment? Nope. Guys, I wish you the best. I hope it works out for you. But until God himself tells me to get out of this box, I'm not <laughs> leaving it. Because every time I stepped outside of this box, according to my ministry and what I do here, I've been whacked with zeros on the back of it. And Maybe so, we need to get people with compelling stories. That's what we need to do next time. We need to yeah, find somebody. Well, you know, if Shane just, if you just weren't such a boring kind of a guy. <laughs> with, with my wife, you know what my wife would tell you right now? <laughs> You've heard 5% of our story. <laughs> That's yeah. what she would tell That's exactly, me. Yeah. We I'm, had a lot I'm, of fun. We walked out of the holiday house and she goes, this was so much more fun when we were broke. <laughs> we came out of there with 15 bags. Now that you can go in there and actually buy 15 bags, we didn't buy nothing, you know? Yeah. It's hilarious. So. All right, let's do the lightning round. You ready, Dennis? Yeah, let's go. Uh -oh. All right, quick and easy and painless. Hiking, hunting, or fishing? Uh, Hiking. Hamburgers, tacos, or pizza? Tacos. Oh, my goodness, tacos. Whoa, whoa, whoa. From? I went to pizza, too, so. Tacos, tacos from where? From where? Tacos, uh, my wife, I'm not saying that because it's my wife, but listen, I get them twice a week. It's taco night and they are the best. Two taco nights a week, man. You taco are rich. Night, right. All I got to do is say taco. Yep. Got it. <laughs> All right. So she's a Texan. So soft, yeah. soft or hard shell tacos. Uh, she loves soft. I love hard shell. Okay. Well, there you go. We got them both covered. Taco. Beaches or beaches or woods. Oh, beaches. Texting or talking. Uh, texting. Favorite day of the week. Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, Tuesdays right now, Tuesday mornings. Because? Got a great men's group studying books together, six of us. We get a book, we read it and talk about it, and, you know, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And same group has been together how long? Uh, a buddy of mine and I started that probably about two years ago, and we've added people to it. Every so often, we'll find somebody new that wants to come and read. Good for you. Good for I you. I wish man. somebody would taught me that when I was 22 years old. I do a bunch of work. I do a bunch of work, uh, on peers. I need to get, I need to get, speaking of books, I'll, uh, I'll try I'll, I'll, the author and I do have done a podcast together. He, he came up with a phrase, peer novation, peer novation, peers and, and peers. And, uh, I'll hawk, I'll hawk his book. He won't. I love it. Mind. Yeah. You need to see it. Well, you actually need to see it. Yeah. Lean, don't worry lean about toward it. Wisdom. I'll, I'll, I'll get him to send you a copy, Shane. Oh, I would uh, but, love but that. I'm I'm, I'm super I'm super into I'm super into I'm super into groups and super into you know us sharing our insights and our information. Sure. And what? How do you pronounce so, that? Leo who? Leo Batari. Batari. B o t t a r y. For those of you that are listening. B o t t a r y. L e o b o t t a r y. dot com. Dot com. Yeah, we're in the middle. That, we're in the middle it. of leadership and self deception right now. By the oh, Harbinger wow. Institute, that is absolutely phenomenal. It is, uh, is, is phenomenal. It's right over I, one of my shoulders somewhere. Is it really? Have you yeah. read it? Oh yeah, yeah, Years yeah. We're ago. we're deep in the middle of it. And oh then yeah. My team and I are going through John Gordon's power uh, power of a positive team. I love yeah. John Gordon. I don't yeah, know yeah, I yeah. There you go. All right. Let's see. Where'd I leave off? So you Sorry. said Tuesdays. Favorite city in the U.S. beside the one you live in? Ooh, favorite city. I'm going to go with. Uh, ooh, Phoenix, Arizona for the golf. Ooh, do you have a for nickname? Do what? Do you have a nickname? <laughs> Big country. <laughs> Big country. <laughs> That's yeah. what they call me. It's funny. I had a group I played golf with in, in um out of Illinois, Chicago. They call me Big Country. And then I've got a group of mortgage brokers that we just got back. That There's six of us in different states that we we met through a mutual lenders, but we meet two or three times a year and discuss best practices, right? Because we're small business owners and stuff. Right. And they call me Big Country. It's the craziest thing ever. I'm not, I, I'm, a, I'm from Arkansas, I guess. That's where they get Big Country from. Yeah, well, they call course. me BC, Big Country. All right. What? What favorite band or musician are you listening to right now? Oh, Kenny Chesney. I love some Kenny Chesney. 
All right, you've got an hour to do nothing. What are you going to do? Play golf, practice golf. Favorite holiday? Holiday Christmas. First job? Oh, my goodness. Um, Bussing tables. Well, bussing tables at age 15 at Bonanza or selling candy. My dad would give me $5 a week. I had to manage my money a dollar a day, right, for lunch. He'd give it to me on Sunday night. I'd go buy 500 penny candies, sell them two for a nickel. Then I'd go buy 1250 the next day, sell them two for a nickel. By Thursday, I'd have $70. I was in um, seventh grade. <laughs> Look at him. Entrepreneurial, <laughs> man. Yeah. I, I love, love it. it man. I love it. Do you play a musical instrument? I don't. Describe your favorite meal. My favorite meal. My favorite meal is going to be some nice deep dish pepperoni. Mm. Chicago style. Uh, first concert. First concert, MC Hammer and Rob Bass. <laughs> <laughs> I quit and Kenny Chesney. Right there, right Walmart there by Kenny me, Chesney. Yeah, Walmart wouldn't let me also. I quit so I could go to that concert. <laughs> please tell me. Please tell me that you once owned a pair of MC Hammer pants. Uh, yes, I probably still have a pair. You yes. have parachute pants? Uh, absolutely. We had parachute pants back in the day. I lived in Pine Bluff for two years, man. Of course, we all had tried to break dance a little bit. <laughs> Funniest movie. Oh my goodness! Funniest movie. I love some um, uh, Happy Gilmore. Mm. Yeah, there you go. I love Fav- some Happy Gilmore. Favorite sports team? Oh my goodness, St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, baseball guy. STL. Yeah. Shane, there you go. Thomas Lester. <laughs> daddy, Daddy, Daddy! My initials are on the hat, Daddy. That's That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. That's excellent. Uh, f- uh, dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. Do you own dogs? Oh, yes. Right there they are. Black one is Rascal. The middle one is uh, Mr. He's a red healer. And the brown one is Socks. Mr. Rascal and Socks. I How like cute. it. So cake or pie? Uh, Cake. What kind? Strawberry. How many hours of sleep do you get each night? Uh, maybe five or six, maybe. What's your favorite article of clothing <laughs> that you can mention? That I can mention? <laughs> can mention yeah, my new, my new, um, uh, my new underwear, which are um, uh, Duluth Chill Arma Chills. Yeah, Duluth. Arma I've seen, I've seen the commercials. They are freaking awesome. Duluth Trading. You're looking yes, at sir. a Duluth Trading shirt. What's so great about underwear? Come on, what's so great about underwear? I mean, yeah. Oh, there's oh. nothing beats a great pair of underwear. You oh my me? goodness, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This will be chill. Then it's chill. This, this will be easy for a guy like you who who reads as much as you you do. Favorite quote. Favorite quote. In order to be an effective giver, you must be open to receive. I like that. Who said that? Uh, Go Giver, by Bob yeah. Berg. Bob Berg. Okay, so I have a kicker bonus question. Uh oh. I've been waiting this entire time. Have you ever gotten frustrated and thrown a club so hard it went into a tree and you couldn't get it down? That is a true story. It was it was uh it was number uh seven, eight, nine. It was number <laughs> seven at Ponce. I tried to hold on to it. It was Tiger Woods, brand new clubs, probably back in 07. And I had to pay a tree climber to go get that victory red down. Last club I throw, I threw. What do you go to the clubhouse? You go to the clubhouse and say, I need a tree climber to go get my club out of the tree. Had to track one down. It was so high up there, you barely could see it. That's not, that's not, that's, that's not, that's for real. Jeff Atkins must have been talking to you. And did he just, did the guy just climb up there and get it? Cost me 50 bucks. Did he have professional spikes on or he just shimmy up it? Uh, no, he had spikes on. He was a tree climber. Yeah, I had to get up there. It was which great. I said, and this is this is how low brow I am. I told Jeff, I said, "Well, that must have been a heck of a club." He said, "Oh yeah, yeah, it was a nice club. <laughs> yes, yeah, they were brand new, brand new. Tiger Woods just came out with those, the Victory Reds, and um, I tried to pull back at the last moment. I was a little frustrated. Jeff and I probably had a good bet going by that time. Uh, he said not to mention the bets. Oh, did he? <laughs> Too late. My wife, my wife would post on Facebook, hey Jeff, thanks for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 
Uh, no, back, awesome. back to back up just for a second. How'd you and Jeff meet? How did y'all ever meet bowling. up together? Bowling. bowling. Of That's all right. things, bowling, yeah. yes. Uh, I started college with three jobs. I was uh, cooking burgers at the bowling center. I was working at Walmart, and I was uh, busting tables. Right. And they would, wouldn't let you go to the concert, so you quit Walmart. I quit Walmart, and then one night they're teaching um, a buddy of mine how to make the ball hook. And six months later, I quit um, all my jobs and made a living bowling for the next seven years. Randy, I think we're going to have to come back around. The, yeah, the, that's the personal. That, yeah, that that needs to that need. Well, that probably needs hey, to show hey, all. Hold on, check this out. hold on, hold on. Where is it? What do we got? There it is. <laughs> So you your black. Can you Hall read that? Of Fame. You're in the Hall of Fame too. How about that? <laughs> Him and Jeff both. I didn't know. I knew Jeff was. I didn't know you'd been in the Hall of Fame. Yes, sir. Sitting there, a Hall of Fame bowler, and we had no clue. <laughs> Who knew? He was sandbagging us the whole time. Yeah. Sandbagging. Yeah, yeah. Does that say Big Country on it, by the way? That... It does not say Big Country. <laughs> oh, they're, they're love. They texted me last night. Big Country, you okay down there? For all the weather that came through. It was funny, man. I love these guys. <laughs> That's Shane, awesome. I appreciate you saying yes to being on with us. Yeah, Absolutely. Shane, thanks so much, buddy. Hey, I appreciate y'all too. Just remember on the reverse mortgage, if people are out there, don't, if, if somebody tells you it's bad, just have them say, what exactly is it bad? What exactly about it is bad? Oh, they take your house. No, they don't. No, they don't. Right. And if you ask a question like that, I've watched grown men sit there with their father-in-law and cry because they delayed him for two years of getting it. I've got letters after letters from clients writing us, thanking us for the reverse mortgage. Right. And it's just it, 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 because it's not on the table. It doesn't look like an option to so many people. Or here's my fear that you do a reverse mortgage with some nameless corporation in the sky and you lose control over the situation. But your point's very well taken. Typically, the heirs are the only ones that are pissed off about it, right? They are. They are. Because, again, there's a lot of protection mechanisms, even if it is some nameless, if it's an it's an FHA insured loan. Right. So you're protected on that. The only thing that's going to happen if you use somebody off the TV Fred Thompson's mother did a reverse mortgage. Do y'all know that? Mm -hmm. He sat there in San Antonio and said his mother didn't want to be a burden to her baby boy. So he said he had to sign over the interest of the house that he bought her <laughs> so she wouldn't be a burden on a baby boy, right? So you can, you can, Tom Selleck, the Fonz, Robert Wagner, right? But Fred Thompson, yes, he was a movie star too, but he's also a sitting U.S. senator. Yeah, yeah. Right for him yeah. to still promote the product until he passed, right? And his mother did it. And he sat right there in San Antonio and told us his mother did it because she didn't want to be a burden on her baby boy. Well, it but it's like so many things. It's a lack of understanding. It yeah. is, and and you'll I walk into some attorneys or financial advisors' office sometimes. They're like this right here, and by the time five minutes in, they're like this. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, hey, hey. And just got a new book in. Um, he's just showing off the casters on his chair, Randy. That's what he's doing. He's rolling around. Look at this right here. Reverse mortgages for financial advisors, right? Retirement researchers guide series. So this right here just got it in, heard about it, and I ordered 10 copies of it because this helps people utilize how does that help me in retirement? You have an asset paid for there, Dennis, that's getting you no money. How do you use it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you save plenty of money and you have plenty of money in your accounts, it's probably not for you. How many retirees in the village do you know are that way? I know I've talked to a lot and not all of them are that way. Well, let me tell you what part of the deal is. And, and I, I digress and I know I'm extra, extending this, but a, a lot of times, you know, we look at we look at, at coastal facilities and we say, OK, on the West Coast or on the East Coast, you know, they've got an issue with with grannies being run out of their houses because the taxes are going so high and the valuation. You know, grannies bought a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. It's now a six hundred thousand dollar house. She's got to have a granny clause to, so she can even pay the the real estate tax on the darn thing. And we see that happening in coastal places and we think that's what's going on. We're about to see that here in the village, I believe. Because not, not, be, not, not because of the taxes, but just because the values have increased so greatly and, and nobody knew they didn't know it was going to happen that way. What happens? What happens if she didn't have a mortgage on there and she can't pay her taxes? 
Same somebody thing. goes buys a tax lien, right? They get past the one or two year right of redemption where somebody can go back and pay it. And all of a sudden they kick them out. I mean, there's a whole program out there where you go buy tax liens and kick people out of their house. And, and right? here she had $150,000 yes. in assets in her house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So again, Man. that goes back on the tax authority. It's not so much to that gum reverse mortgage, right? Sh again. Shane, I'll tell you, if, if this goes like I think it will, and this has been a fabulous episode, and I, our watchers and listeners, thank you so much. Shane, would you entertain coming back and visiting with us again? Anytime, anytime. I Man, promise. I appreciate that. it. I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. And like I said, there's all kinds of stories. And again, I if you ever want to talk to somebody who's done one, I mean, I, I've got another appointment with a guy on the 20th of this month up there in the village. He didn't like his appraised value six months ago, so he wants a new appraisal now to see, and so he's waiting to do his counseling. You do understand that before you do a reverse mortgage, you have to go to an independent third-party counselor for a 45-minute interview to make no. sure you understand what you're doing. Really? One more protection mechanism for the client. That's a great idea. Oh, it's an awesome idea. They don't like it most of the time, but hey, they got to go. And they're testing you while you're there, asking you questions and marking off that you can answer these questions and you're paying attention because there have been people that's failed the counseling and they can't, they can't do the reverse until they come back and do counseling again. I had no idea. Randy, did you? No, no, that's an ender. Yeah, that is an ender. That's an ender right there. <laughs> Rod Springs Village Inside Out. I'm Dennis Simpson. He's Shane Lester and he's Randy Cantrell. We'll see you next time. All right. Fantastic. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com, and tell a friend.